chat about the day's big events. I'm so excited to hear what you have to say. Uh, a lot going on today. Uh, what do we got? Well, if you were watching it, we just had the uh, Sean Spicer briefing at the White House. There was that. Uh, all the stuff about the travel ban is still going on. There was an announcement the White House made this morning that I believe tomorrow night at 8 Eastern they're going to make their Supreme Court pick known. So that came out. What else did we have? We had, uh, oh, there was a statement from uh, uh, President Obama about the travel ban stuff. So I'm going to read that for a second. So a lot of stuff happening. Um, so I would love to hear you. See, what we do here, if you weren't here for the last one, which was over the weekend, is, uh, is we interact here. It's not like the mainstream media. I'm Steve Lickner, by the way. This is Right Side Broadcasting Network. I probably should have said that at the start. But um, we in we're interactive here. We don't just tell you what to think or just talk at you. We want to hear what you think, have a little discussion with you. If that's cool with you. Uh, you don't have to say anything, but I'd love it if you did. So uh, I should say the way to reach me, you might say, how do I reach you? You're there on my computer. How do I reach you? Two ways you can reach me during this chat. Uh, first is to direct message me on Twitter, and my Twitter handle is at Lookner, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. You can direct message me there, and I'll get it. The other way to reach me is email me at steve.lookner at rsbn.tv. See, you do that, and then I get it here, and then I can, then it goes here in my brain, and then I can uh, read it, and then talk, and then say it, and then talk to you, and it's, it's great. So uh, I hope, uh, I Hope you uh, send in all your comments and your thoughts. As long as they're clean, I'm happy to read them. And uh, where should we begin today? So before we get into like the, the regular thing, I, there was a little piece of breaking news that probably came, I mean, I just saw CNN report it like five minutes ago. So we're giving you pretty breaking news here. And, and that was that um, there was a statement that came out from President Obama. This was from Karen Lewis, spokesperson to former President Barack Obama. So just so you know where I'm taking this from, because I like to be clear on these things, the site I got it from, I believe, was BNO News, at BNO News, uh, which I think is a good breaking news site. Um, so I'm taking this from there. Uh, so I'm assuming this is accurate. If it's not, that's where I got it from. And uh, the statement is, uh, and let me just make sure I'm not, there's not an emergency going on here right now. No, there's not. Uh, so, um, so this statement, I want to read you the statement before we get into our interactive chat. This is from uh, Barack Obama through Ke Kevin Lewis, uh, which is, who is uh, Barack Obama's spokesperson. The statement is this, short statement, three paragraphs. President Obama is heartened by the level of engagement taking place in communities around the country. His final official speech, in his final official speech as president, he spoke about the important role of citizen and how all Americans have a responsibility to be guardians of our democracy, not just during an election, but every day. Citizens exercising their constitutional rights to assemble, organize, and have their votes heard by their elected officials is exactly what we expect to see when American values are at stake. With regard to comparisons to President Obama's foreign policy decisions, as we've heard before, the president as we've heard before, the president fundamentally disagrees with the notion of discriminating against individuals because of their faith or religion. So, a couple quick things I want to point out here. Um, uh, this is not. You might wonder, so there's, there's clearly subtext going on here. Uh, one thing I noticed is there's, this is certainly not supportive of the, of the executive order President Trump made about the travel bans. Uh, nothing in there says I support that. The statement basically supports people protesting. You might read that as basically a way of former President Obama saying, I disapprove of the ban, but I don't want to literally say that in my message. So this could be signaling that he disapproves of it. I don't know, just one way to read it. Uh, something else that stands out to me about this statement President Obama, former President Obama just made, was, um, was the end of the second paragraph where it says, uh, the second, in the second paragraph, this one sentence, and it says this, it's worth reading again. Citizens exercising their constitutional right to assemble, organize, and have their voices heard by their, electrical, by their elected officials is exactly what we expect to see when American values are at stake. That, to me, implies that former President Obama thinks that President Trump's travel ban puts American values at stake. And another way of saying that is it implies that President Obama, do I have to say former President Obama? I'm going to say president, former President Obama, but if I forget and I say President Obama, 
I mean former President Obama. It implies that former President Obama thinks that President Trump's travel ban executive order goes against American values. So that's how I read this. Now, he doesn't specifically say that, but that's the implication here. Um, and, uh, and something else that, that's worth noting here at the end, uh, it says that President Obama fundamentally disagrees with the notion of discriminating against individuals because of their faith or religion. And you might read that as a unstated, implied claim that President Trump's executive order does discriminate against individuals because of their faith or religion. So when I read this, I see, these are the things I see standing out. Well, first of all, obviously it stands out that he's like saying like, hey, um, good for you protesting in general. He's saying that. I mean, that's, that's, that's obvious what he's saying. And he's also saying like, you know, I, you know, he's saying I'm for people having a voice and exercising their right to protest and saying what they think. All that, fine, 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 fine. But, but aside from what's obviously stated, uh, the three things I'm noticing here are A, no support whatever for the travel ban, which to me suggests uh, that's, this might be a way of saying something against the travel ban without actually saying that explicitly because he can't because he's a former president and it would look bad. Uh, second, that he's implying that the travel ban goes against American values. And three, he's implying that the travel ban discriminates against individuals because of their faith or religion. Uh, I don't agree with those last two points. Uh, and that's going to be part of a uh, comment I'm going to make about this whole thing. But before I make comments, because this, this isn't just me making comments and me giving my position. It's about you guys, you guys uh, commenting in and letting us hear and each other hear what you have to say. So let me just quickly say again, if you want to reach me during this chat and you want to have your comments be heard, let yourself be heard. Two ways to do it, go to Twitter, direct message me at my Twitter handle, at Lookner, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R, or email me, steve.lookner at rsbn.tv. So I'm quickly, what I like to do here is sort of just make sure I'm up to date here and see if there are any, I know it takes you a while to send in comments in, but sometimes once in a while people send stuff in early and I want to see here what we got. All right, somebody sent me a link. Uh, but I'm not going to click on the link yet and do that because uh, then if I, I'll have to explain to you what what's comes up on my screen. So uh, let me just get my web page, my email back up here so you can email me. Hold on a second. All right, we're good to go. So please comment. Let me know what you're thinking we're gonna, we'll, we'll, and I will share it with everybody else. So what I wanted to say, what I want to start off by saying is um, one comment I want to make is so there have been these protests the last couple days about uh, President Trump's executive order uh, 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 with the, that made the travel bans. And, and to reiterate, uh, you know, those, the, the, the travel bans involved, it said, uh, it said no refugees from any country for 90 days, uh, no Syrian refugees uh, indefinitely, and then it said no immigrants whatsoever from seven countries, seven predominantly Muslim countries, uh, Iraq, Iran, Syria, and uh, four others um, uh, for, the ne- for the next 120 days. So there were huge protests about this. And uh, uh, my reaction to these protests is a reaction I've been having a lot to uh, people's, the left's reaction to a lot of stuff Trump has done, which is why is everybody always so angry about everything? There's such anger out there. And, and you might say, like, Steve, uh, well, of course they're angry. Uh, because, well, if you're on the left, you'll say, of course we're angry because it's about this and this and this, and it's about anti-immigration and anti-Muslim and blah, blah, blah. So, so here's my, my issue. My issue is, uh, I, my theory is that the left and uh, people opposing Trump get so angry about everything because they misconstrue what issues are really at stake. And they, they're not careful about thinking like, like, what is the thing that Trump is actually proposing? Why is he actually proposing it? Uh, and they just assume things about what Trump is, President Trump is proposing rather than actually look at what he's proposing, listening to what he says. So, for example, let's take this travel ban thing. Why was President Trump proposing, why did President Trump give this executive order? He gave it, and he said he gave it, to keep America safe. That's why he proposed it. 
what is the tra- what is this what what is the actual executive order what's the travel ban it's not a ban on all muslims uh, it's not a ban a permanent ban on refugees it's a ban on certain groups from uh, certain people from certain places for a certain amount of time the whole purpose of which is to keep potential terrorists out of the country and to give us time to uh, can, uh, re- go over and uh, maybe adjust our vetting system. That's what it is, and that's why he's doing it. Now, it's perfectly reasonable for somebody to agree with this executive order, uh, and, but, but there's a, the reasonable way to disagree is to say, well, look, President Trump is doing this executive order to keep America safe. But you might, there's somebody might make an argument, and I think there is an argument to be made for this, which is that you might argue like, well, this executive order isn't the policy which keeps America most safe. Maybe there's a different policy which would keep America more safe. So for example, somebody might argue uh, this policy, yeah, it keeps out some terrorists from coming in in the near future, but it'll get other country, people in other countries angry in the long term, and that will create more terrorists in the long term. So that would be a way to argue that, uh, look, I get what the... I get what the executive order is supposed to do, but I don't think it's going to the best way of achieving that goal. So, and as I said, I, I think an argument can be made for that kind of view, that this was not the ideal policy for achieving that goal. But when I heard this executive order, when I heard about it, and then I thought to myself, hmm, do I agree with it or not? And then I started thinking, well, maybe, maybe this isn't exactly what I would do to best achieve that goal. I didn't get crazy angry about it. I didn't feel like going out and protesting about it. I just felt like this is a policy disagreement. This is a policy that President Trump is adopting to achieve a certain goal, a goal we can all agree on, which is keeping America safe. And I just thought, you know, maybe I think that there's a maybe different way to go, but that's not something where I feel like I'm enraged about and I need to uh, post nine million messages on Facebook yelling about what a bad president he is and how he's evil and I need to go out and protest and disrupt you know, people at airports and stuff like that just because this is a policy disagreement. But the protests I saw are, in, are incredibly angry and, and my whole Facebook page after this thing, uh, blew, after the executive order was released for basically two days has just been and, 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 and I'm from Los Angeles and Boston and New York. I have a lot of friends who are liberal or, you know, not, they're definitely not Trump fans. But, but all these people are just, the anger, it's like it gets me tense looking at it because people are so angry, like the worst injustice has ever happened. And like this is an existential threat to like civilization that you need to go out and protest this executive order. And as I watch the protests and I read my, my friends' Facebook posts and I watch interviews on TV and I read the coverage, uh, I, I keep seeing these positions taken. I keep seeing these objections raised. Uh, this, this, this executive order is anti-Muslim. I see that one a lot. This executive order is anti-immigrant. I see that a lot. And people, these people who are, are taking these views, which I think are look, most of the protesters I've seen, they're angry because they're angry that someone would be anti-Muslim or anti-immigrant. Or anti-refugee, that's another one. They'll say, this proposal is, is uncaring of refugees. It doesn't, do, it doesn't, hold them, uh, it doesn't stay with the American value of uh, giving people help when they need it in other countries. Now, I will grant you that if any president took an action that was truly, uh, it was supposed to be, this was the entire, the, the entire purpose of the action, and the action itself was anti-refugee, in general, or anti-immigrant in general, or anti-Muslim in general, I would be really angry about that. But this executive action was none of those things. But once again, and we saw this throughout the campaign, and it gets, now I'm getting angry because this is one of the reasons that brought me here to right side. I get so angry about this. Uh, people criticize President Trump and candidate Trump before they criticize him and they object to him and they get all angry and they protest. And what they're protesting over is positions that he hasn't actually taken. And they don't, I don't know if it's not thinking about it or not being willing to think about it or just wanting to 
have a certain narrative and just just not wanting to question that narrative and, and wanting to fit everything he says into this narrative. But he, to me, it is clear that President Trump is taking this position to keep us safe. He said that throughout the campaign. It says it in the executive order. Uh, that's why he's doing it. He's made a policy choice. It's not anti-refugee in general because it, it, it doesn't say we're never going to let refugees in. It does set a cap on refugees, I believe, at 50,000 for the year. But by the way, if you're saying that President Trump is anti-refugee, I just saw a chart today. Go back and look. I believe it was in the New York Times, but you can go back and look. The number of refugees uh, let in under President Obama during his eight years was significantly less than many years for the 30 years before. In many of the 30 years before President Obama, there were way more refugees led into the country than under President Obama. So if you think President Trump is anti-refugee just because he set like a 50,000 limit on refugees this year, well, shouldn't you be angry at President Obama because he set a limit on refugees and he didn't let in as many refugees as the people beforehand? Uh, also, it's not anti-immigrant in general, this uh this, this, this travel ban, because it says nothing, the only immigration in general it restricts is the immigration from these seven countries, which uh, are seven countries that are, are, are thought to be dangerous countries in terms of having terrorists come over here. So by restricting immigrate, if you were just anti-immigrant, you'd just say like no more immigrants, or you'd set like a really crazy low uh, immigration, immigration cap. But that's not that 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 restricting immigration for restricting immigration for ninety days from those seven countries. That's not anti-immigrant to me. It's just hey, these are the problem countries. Let's take ninety days, ninety days, and uh, w- stop immigration from those countries. And so I don't see it as anti-immigrant. I don't see it as uh, anti-refugee, and I certainly don't see it as anti-Muslim. Um, it, it's it's the only mention of Muslim. Is in it is that is that it restricts it focuses like on the, one part of it focus on these seven predominantly Muslim countries, but it focuses on those countries because uh, those are the countries that we think are most likely to su- supply ter- to, to, to from wh- from which we think it's most likely that terrorists would come into this country. Now you might disagree, and it's totally reasonable too if you'd like, with the whole thinking behind this executive order in the sense of you might think like, well, this is not the best way to reduce terrorism, as I said before. And if you think that, that's fine. And I'm happy to have that discussion with you. And as I said, I personally think there's an argument to be made on that that, that front. But the the anger I am seeing again and again and again over this issue is I see people carrying around signs saying, you know, Trump is anti-Muslim or Trump is anti-refugee or Trump is anti-immigrant. And this executive order is not anti-Muslim, it's not anti-refugee, and it's not anti-immigrant. It is a policy decision based on the information we have to reduce terrorism. And it might be bad policy, or it might be okay policy. Again, I'll repeat this. I think there's a case to be made it's not the ideal policy. But that's a different point, and to me that's the relevant way to object. If you're going to object to this, object to it on the basis of what it is, a piece of policy designed to reduce terrorism. But the anger to me seems to come from people who don't even understand what, or or don't want to understand what the idea behind this policy is, what the goal it is, what the goal of it is, and just, just take their view about what the policy might be and attribute it to President Trump when I don't think he has that view at all. Now, maybe all these protesters think, oh, uh, President Trump is actually lying and he says this policy is for reducing terrorism, but he's really doing it because he's a secret anti-Muslim or anti-immigrant or anti-refugee person. Look, if you're going to say that, I can't argue with you because you're just basing it on no evidence. If you want to show me like private communication President Trump had where he said that he was anti-immigrant or anti-refugee or anti-Muslim, fine, then I might believe you. But otherwise, you're just like a conspiracy theorist. So it gets me really upset. And, and, and I just, when, another problem with this is when, when there's all this protest that's all angry and, about, and, and trying to claim that this executive order is anti-Muslim or anti-immigrant or anti-refugee, 
Uh, what that does is it crowds out the discussion we should be having, which is, is this the right policy to achieve the stated ends? The goal of the policy is to reduce terrorism. So the discussion we should be having is, is this the best way to reduce terrorism? But because we all get, because everybody seems to be getting hung up on the anti-Islamist thing of, uh, the anti-Islam of this policy or the anti-refugee, the anti-immigrant of this aspect of this policy, which I think actually doesn't exist, uh, that crowds out all the discussion of the, whether it's a, the best policy for us to be having to achieve the stated end, which I think is, th for America, the discussion we should be having. So, I, 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 I'm very upset about this, uh, and it really bothers me, and it bothered me during the campaign, and, and I don't know why. I, I don't want to say, like, oh, people who do this stuff, uh, protesting against, against President Trump, aren't, like, smart enough to understand why he's doing what he's doing. I mean, I, th I think they are. I know, I know a lot of, like, geniuses. A lot of my smartest friends are, le are people on the left and are protesting this. But I, I just, I think there's some sort of, like, Something about President Trump, and I would say right-wing views in general, I think there's this thing on the left where they're so sure they're right about so much stuff that anything that disagrees with it, they, they, they can't, they just shut down and they, they're not even willing to listen and they're not even willing to consider the other side because they just think, well, the other side can't be right. And that to me is bad for democracy. And it, it's bad if people on the right do it as well. People on both sides should listen to each other. Okay, I didn't intend to do a big long speech about this, but I got upset and I did. This is supposed to be a chat, so I got that out of the way. So I want to hear what you think. What do you think about uh, the travel ban? Any more thoughts after a couple days? What do you think about the protests? Uh, I have some thought on the whole airport protest and the whole Uber protest thing, and I'll say those a little later, but I want to hear what you think. What do you think about um, the Sean Spicer briefing today. Anything about that that came up? Uh, what do you think uh, for the next Supreme Court justice that's going to be proposed? I guess tomorrow night they're going to release the name. President Trump's going to release the name. Is there some sort of a uh, thing you're hoping for, some kind of positions you want the Supreme Court justice to take, the nominee to take? Uh, so I'd love to hear the answer to all these questions. And if you want to reach me, um, you can reach me at either at Lookner, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R on Twitter. Direct message me. Or you can uh, email me at steve.luckner at rsbn.tv. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up my iPad. And I'm going to see if we have any comments yet. If we don't, I might cry. Uh, I hope that's OK. So give me a second to cry if we don't have any comments yet. I'm going to be very sad. I'm getting sad thinking about it. But I have some other things to say, so I'll just keep going. But uh, hold on. I also want to take a sip of water because I still have a little bit of that cold I had a couple days ago, which you may or may not remember if you were watching. So <clears throat> I'm doing better with the not having my nose entirely clogged and disgustingly uh, <coughs> uh, blowing it on camera. And just so you know, <coughs> I swallowed that water wildly and now it's going to make me cough. So great. Okay. I'm going to check if we have some comments here. All right. I see... I think I see one right here. Let me go in and check. Okay, we have a comment from Tony Mack. Thank you, Tony Mack. Tony Mack, a uh, longtime, I know, viewer at RSBN, so we appreciate your viewing. Tony Mack says this. I'm just peeking it over. Tony Mack, it seems clean, so I can read it. Tony Mack says, I agree with extreme vetting. It has to happen, but I'm not sure bombing them will help. That would be a continuation of the Obama and Bush administration's foreign policies, and innocent civilians will die. Uh, yet in any given war, there are always civilian casualties, so I'm not sure where I stand on that issue, and if, and if it is for the better or just not worth it. And I'm thinking maybe, Tony Mack, when you say bombing them, you might be referring to, like, drone strikes. So this is an interesting issue because uh, I, I did see somebody say, yesterday on Twitter, I can't remember who, something like, you know, people are saying President Trump is anti-Muslim uh, because of this travel ban, but what about President Obama's uh, launching all these drone strikes in Muslim countries and ki killing a lot of innocent Muslim civilians? Why don't they complain about that? And so what Tony Mack might be talking about here with the bombing is, will President Trump continue the drone strikes like uh, President Obama did? Will he go more? Will he go less? Uh, and 
And Tony Mack is saying, you know, there might be a cost to that in terms of upsetting people there and um, and killing and, and uh, killing innocent civilians. So that is a, that's another issue that's going to come up, and uh, and that's something that I don't want to say look forward to. And sort of, I don't look forward to anybody getting bombed. I look forward to sort of seeing what the policy will end up being, and whether uh, President Trump changes the policy of President Obama on that or not. So thank you, Tony Mack, for the comment. Much appreciated. Let me go here now. I see a few comments. Okay, uh, we have uh, Miss Tree says Obama needs to shut up. LOL. Thank you, Miss Tree, for your comment. John Aspin says, "This is at NJ underscore Aspin." John Aspin says, "Do you think Trump will take a stand against Saudi Arabia? They seem untouchable." Well, and John, you might be referring to uh, a number of people have said. Uh, why? So this, this, this travel ban, one of the parts of it was saying no immigrants at all from seven predominantly Islamic countries uh, in the next 90 days. And some people were saying, well, why isn't Saudi Arabia on that list? Since, for example, most of the 9-11 hijackers came from Saudi Arabia. Uh, and, uh, and so I think John might be saying like, hey, he doesn't seem to be taking uh, a stand against Saudi Arabia in, in, this, in this executive order. So will he? And, and so, John, it's a good question. I mean, so a couple things here. First of all, Saudi Arabia is, you know, they have lots of oil, economic ally, um, a powerful economic country. So that's one thing you might think could, could affect the decision and maybe make, give Trump a second thought. Some people have claimed that uh, Trump might have investments. I, believe, I know they say in some countries that weren't on the list. I can't remember if they said Saudi Arabia or not, but if he does, some people might claim that, although I've seen no evidence... I've seen no evidence presented to me that Trump is making his foreign policy decisions based on investments. So in the absence of evidence, I'm going to to take President Trump at his word and assume he's not doing that. Uh, But, you know, another thing is that that I believe Saudi Arabia this morning said something about helping set up safe zones. Uh, And I also know that Saudi Arabia has been trying to fight against terrorists in Yemen, uh, groups that we think might be anti-American. So... There are reasons out there why President Trump might want, want to uh, go hard line on Saudi Arabia the way he is with other countries. Now, you might say that's inconsistent. And look, I'm, an, I'm sort of an idealist, and it always bothers me when foreign policy is inconsistent. But it kind of realistically has to be if you want to benefit America. I mean, the ultimate... You could, do, you, could, you, could, you, could be, you could do foreign policy to be consistent on everything and say, like, I'm always going to treat every country the same way, and I'm not going to make exceptions for rich and powerful countries. Uh, you know, I'm not going to make an exception for China that I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not going to make an exception for China just because we have a lot of trade with them or something. But the problem is, ultimately, foreign policy is to benefit us, and, and we need to do the things that best. I, I would think all of you would agree that we, would, we need to benefit our country the most by doing foreign, through our foreign policy. Uh, and maybe sometimes having an inconsistent foreign policy actually benefits us more than having a foreign policy that treats every country the same. So we'll see what, ha- what, what will go on with Saudi Arabia. Another interesting issue to look at. Uh, so John Aspen, thank you for that question. Uh, we have a question from... Oh, uh, oh and, uh, and I, before, I, uh, before I go on, I do want to say uh, later tonight, well, at 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, tune in for Right Side Now with Liz Willis. And uh, that I, I, there's some immigration stuff they're going to talk about, and it's always a cool show to catch up on the news and get Liz's perspective, so I want to throw that out there. And then also tonight is going to be the premiere of Bill Mitchell's first show for RSBN. He is coming to RSBN starting tonight, and his show is going to be at 7 Eastern. So a couple shows for you to watch tonight. And also our lineup after that, so Wayne uh, Dupree is on at 9, and I think I'm not leaving anybody out but uh, they'll let me know if I am. So watch all our lineup tonight, and we have more shows to come. And uh, so another comment, though. Thank you for sending in comments. I'm not crying. I'm, I'm happy. A Citizen Kane says, uh, Dear Steve, what do you predict will happen after the 90-day travel ban is over? Good question. I, I don't see, given all of the protests and the angry feedback, whether you think the protests are justified or not, and as I, I made a big rant that I don't think they are, uh, I don't think... The 90 and 120 day things, the 90 day travel ban and the 120 day travel travel ban will be extended. I think there's no chance of that because I think there would be such anger about that that it it just it won't serve President Trump's larger goals to continue it. Uh, I think there's a world. Well, I was going to say, 
I think there's a world in which those are shortened, but I also think President Trump sees himself as wanting to be strong and not wanting to give in and wanting to represent uh, the people who voted for him in the strongest way possible, and I think he might see that as a sign of giving in. So maybe another president would shorten it. So my best guess is that the 90-day and the 120-day 120 120-day parts of the ban will stand, but not go longer than that. That's my guess. Could be wrong. If you disagree with me, let me know. So thank you, Citizen Kane. Good question. Um, let's see here. Oh, we have a bunch of comments. I'm so excited. I was going to cry. I got nervous. One time it's going to happen. One time um, it's going to happen where uh, I, I look at these and there's no comments and I really cry. So uh, before going to your comments, thank you for commenting. I want to reiterate what we're doing here for people who might have just joined. We're doing an interactive chat. We're talking about the day's big events. We're talking about the tr- Trump's travel ban, the protested travel ban, the Sean Spicer press conference. We haven't even talked about Supreme Court yet. There's going to be a, a Supreme Court nominee from President Trump announced tomorrow night. There's that. Uh, also, there was another news event today that came out where the Democrats in the Senate, uh, there was, I can't remember the name, but some Democrats in the Senate said they were going to filibuster the Supreme Court nomination, whoever it is. And you might think like, oh, wait, so does that mean that there, since there aren't more 60 or more Republicans, does that mean that the Democrats can for four years stop a not Supreme Court nominee from getting approved? So you need, uh, at the start of a, of a Supreme Court nomination vote, you, this, the nominee needs a simple majority. But if there's a filibuster, the nominee needs 60 votes to break the filibuster. And the Republicans have less than fewer than 60 votes in the Senate. So you might think if the Democrats filibuster a Supreme Court nominee, that they can do that for four straight years. They can't, well, but, but a reason they can't is there's this thing called the nuclear option, which um, if the Republicans want, let's say the Democrats are filibustering, the Republicans can change the rules of the Senate to allow uh, for a simple majority and no filibuster, and to allow that uh, a simple majority will approve a Senate, uh, a Supreme Court nominee. So. If you're, if you're someone who wants a Supreme Court nominee to be approved by the Republicans out there, I wouldn't worry about the filibuster threat uh, in the sense of it seems like, and I believe Mitch McConnell said today, he actually said, uh, if they filibuster, we'll do the nuclear option and we'll get our nominee approved. So you don't, th- you don't have to worry about no nominee getting approved for four years because uh, the, the Republicans have a way to get around that. Anyway, we're doing this chat here. We're talking about all these issues and other stuff that, you might, that might be coming up. If there's breaking news, feel free to send it to me. Uh, Micah and Mayer will tell it to me, but also feel free to send it to me. But the, I want to hear your comments on this stuff. We want to uh, let you talk, let, hear your voice, let you share with other viewers what you're thinking. And if you want to do that, there's two ways of doing that. Uh, the first way is to direct message me on Twitter at at Luckner, which is at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. And you can email me at steve.luckner at rsbn.tv, and I will get your messages. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read some more messages, but I'm going to drink some water first. Mm. Thanks for joining me, by the way. A uh, little different timing today. We did it on Saturday night last time, and we thought we'd do a little midday thing today, see how that goes. So hope you're having a good day. Uh, if you're watching at work, don't ignore your work too much so you get fired and then can't watch us at work anymore. Uh, so um, we have uh, some more comments. Let me, let me go through some now. Uh, Joss1963 says, just remember Obama did the same for Iraq and well for six months. So Joss wants to point out that President Obama, uh, uh, the State Department under President Obama restricted immigration from Iraq for a six month period. And I can't remember if it was all immigrants or just refugees. But the point is, President Obama did a six month travel ban similar to what uh, President Trump did. did. And he, President Obama did this in 2011. And a number of people like Joss1963 are saying like, hey, you know, how can you, if you're gonna complain and be angry about President Trump doing this, shouldn't you be angry about President Obama doing this too? Thank you, Joss1963 for the comment. Shannon Lopez says, what is the difference in the immigration bans that President Trump is implementing versus what former President Obama implemented when he was president? So uh, one I'm aware of, and I don't have all the information at my fingertips, and I will gladly admit that to you. Here at Right Side Broadcasting, we're honest. We're not going to pretend to be something we're not. And I'll tell you when I don't know something. But in terms of the Iraq thing, uh, I can't remember whether the Iraq immigration restriction for six months was just for refugees or for all immigrants. But one difference is that... uh, 
That just applied to Iraq, whereas President Trump's applies to more countries than Iraq. For example, President Trump said no refugees from any country in the world for the next 90 days. And it also said no immigrants whatsoever, including refugees, but also non-refugees, from seven different countries, including Iraq, for 120 days. Uh, and also it said no Syrian uh, refugees indefinitely. So those are all, you could say that, Pre Shannon, Shannon Lopez, to answer your question, uh, you could say that President Trump's one difference, a big difference is that it affects more countries than President Obama's Iraq, uh, Iraq travel ban did. Let's see, uh, we have another comment here. Jesse Lowe's, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, L-O-H-S-E. Jesse says, um, this is a fan, and, and let me, I, I also, I forgot, I should always remember to say this, and I forgot to say it, so I'm gonna say it now. Uh, as they say on Twitter, retweet is not endorsement. So we want to give you guys a voice. So we're not going through your comments and picking out the ones we agree with. We're going through them, and as long as they're clean, we're going to let you hear them. Um, so when I read these, any of your comments, I and RSBN are not endorsing them. We're not disagreeing with them. All we're doing is putting them out there. So we want to let your views be heard. So don't take, if, 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 if we read something and you personally disagree with it, don't blame me and don't blame RSPN. The, the point here is not to say what's right and what's wrong. It's to, give you your, it's to give you a range of views that people are writing in so you can listen to them. So I'm just reading these as they come across and, uh, and letting you hear them. So anyways, uh, Jesse Losey, what does Jesse have to say? Jesse says, uh, this is a fantastic opportunity to bring to light the truth about immigration, specifically the abuse of welfare programs by greater than 50% of immigrants, including illegals. The fact that many are illiterate in their own tongue to say nothing of English and shine light on the actual ways this mass immigration policy has negatively affected other countries. There is no mystery how this ends. So that's Jesse's view. Again, you might disagree with it, uh, but we're just letting people air their views here. And I also should also point out, uh, uh, frequently, oh, when you guys write in your comments, which I love that you do, you'll quote statistics and stuff. And just so this just show this show doesn't become Steve, the Steve show where Steve constantly looks through the internet and checks statistics. I do not fact check your statistics. So if you quote statistics, I'm gonna quote them, but with the caveat for all of you that just know, like just like when you read something in a newspaper, you might wanna fact check it. Uh, and so here, if you, if you hear a statistic, don't just always assume it's true. Any statistic anybody gives, you should feel free to go check it out for yourself. Again, these are not endorsements, I'm letting you hear the comments. But thank you for your comment, Jesse. Uh, Connor Wells says this. Um, Evening from the UK. Thank you, Connor, for watching. Uh, the biased media in the UK is covering the US travel ban like crazy. That's very interesting. I did not know that, uh, uh, Connor. Uh, so, so the biased media in the UK is covering the, UK travel, the US travel ban like crazy. Uh, at the time of messaging you, the UK House of Commons, who are our House of Representatives, are debating whether to ban Trump from the UK. Those protesters didn't understand that Obama did exactly the same thing in 2011 by banning refugees from terror-prone countries like Syria and Iraq. Do you think the UK will ban Trump and will this ruin the special relationship? Uh, good question. Thank you for that information about what's going on in the UK. I do not know enough about UK politics and the UK House of Commons to know whether they will ban him. I wish I did. I don't. Uh, my guess is if you want to know more about that information, probably check out uh, anybody out there, maybe go check out some of the big you know, UK newspapers or something, or maybe there's good UK people on Twitter you can follow uh, and check that out. Uh, will it ruin the special relationship? Uh, well, I mean, to me, I don't think, if, if, there was a ban, if there is a ban passed in the House of Commons, that to me is not coming from a faction of people who agree with Theresa May, because to me, uh, Theresa May and Donald Trump showed that they wanted to have a good working relationship in their press conference a few days ago. So unless Theresa May has totally changed her tune, which I haven't been watching coverage of the House of Commons today, so I don't know, and, and British politics today, so I'm not sure. But my guess is if that passed, and it, let me say this, if that ban passed on Trump in the UK, but it was from a faction not, uh, I mean, I don't know if this is possible, but maybe there's some parliamentary way that they could get like one extra vote and, and it could work out this way. If Theresa May didn't associate herself with this ban, I'd, I think the special relationship would be fine. Um, so, but thank you, Connor, for that question. And let me go real, uh, so, many, so many comments, thank you so much. Let me read a couple more. Uh, and uh, John Stanton says, Steve, who are you talking to? We love the policy. Why are you upset? 
calmly encourage our side, not shoot down theirs. They are lying to us. So, uh, so, so I, John, I welcome your, so I'm guessing your response was to me when I said personally, I think a case could be made that this is not the best policy to achieve the stated goal, which is to prevent terrorism. But uh, I respect your right to disagree with me on that. And look, I, I think a great thing about right side is that uh, we don't, we don't tell you what to think. We don't all think the same thing. There will be things, there will be, I don't think the same thing as everybody else that works here. You don't think the same thing as me. I'm sure a lot of you out there think about different things. One thing I love about getting your comments is seeing your different views. So uh, I think we can, we, we can be open with each other and stuff. And uh, so uh, I, I, I appreciate if I, and as I said before, like it is totally open for you to think this is the best policy to pre prevent terrorism. That's, a, that's an interesting argument to have, and it's a good argument to have, and as I said before, that's the kind of argument we should be having, not be having protests over this supposed anti-Islam and anti-Muslim and anti-refugee executive order, which actually isn't any of those things. So here, here, I'm all for having that discussion about what the best policy to reduce terrorism is. Uh, and, and I think, let me say this, I think you can be pro-Trump, I think, or pro-Republican, or pro-conservative, and not agree with every single thing the president does. Uh, that's just part of being an American. So, I, and I would, and I, I know some of you sometimes aren't going to agree with everything President Trump does. Maybe you agree with, maybe you do. Maybe you agree with a lot of what he does. But you know, great thing about America is you're free to think what you want. So, so, uh, but I, I, I do appreciate the message, John. And feel free if you guys don't like what I'm saying, you want to disagree. I, I welcome it. Another comment here. This is from uh, Drain the Swamp. Drain the Swamp says, sad thing is people are not realizing that Obama did the very same thing and that President Trump used the same countries as he had indicated before in his travel ban like this here shows. Great show as always. Thank you. So Drain the Swamp is making that point again that Obama did the same thing. That seems to be like something you guys are concerned with today, pointing out that Obama did a similar thing as President Trump did with the Iraq, with uh, refugees, I think refugee, I know refugees, but maybe immigrants too, in general from Iraq. Uh, but also, uh, uh, President Trump, uh, he wanted to point out during the swamp, he or she, that President Trump is using the, the list of seven countries that President Trump used in his travel ban are seven countries cited under the Obama administration. I believe it's being something like the most problematic and dangerous countries in terms of possibly sending terrorists over here. So uh, thank you, Drain the Swamp, for your comment. All right, I need to take a little sip of water. Uh, I love all your comments, by the way. Uh, they're fantastic as usual. Let me take a sip. Mm. Go back to your comments in a second. And I should say to you uh, that uh, we're doing an interactive chat here. And if you want to send in your comment, we'd love to hear it. We'd love to hear from all of you. Uh, either direct message me, and I'm sorry I keep saying this, but you know people turn in a little late sometimes, so I'd rather you have this information than not have it. If you want to send in a comment, direct message me on Twitter at at Luckner, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. Follow me there if you'd like to. I always like having more followers to send you tweets. And uh, you can also reach me here by emailing me at steve.luckner at rsbn.tv, and I'd be happy to read your comment. Hopefully I'll get to them all. So uh, I just want to take a two-second break here and talk about a little something else that's gotten me upset, and maybe you can you want to talk about it as well. And this is this whole Uber protest thing. So, what happened? Um, one thing I saw, as I mentioned before, I have a number of friends uh, from my past lives in like Los Angeles and New York and Boston, and, and going to a school on the East Coast and stuff, uh, who are uh, liberal or not, or either just not liberal, but just really anti-Trump. And when this thing, uh, the, when the travel ban came out and the protests started happening, if you remember, one of the big, a big, really big protest happened at uh, JFK Airport in New York. And so what happened at JFK Airport, one of the things that happened is the taxi drivers uh, stopped going to JFK Airport to do pickups as a protest. So from what I had heard, this is, this is from what I'd heard from the taxi drivers themselves, like their union or organization, whatever, is that many of them are Muslim, and as a form of protest, uh, they wanted to stop picking people up at JFK Airport. So they did. Now, Uber did not stop picking people up at JFK Airport that night. They kept picking people up. And so the next day, there was this flood of Facebook posts of this whole thing where all these people were deleting Uber from their uh, phones, de deleting the Uber app. It was like this whole delete the Uber app 
campaign. It was Uber uh, didn't support Uber didn't support our, our protest because they didn't st- they didn't stop picking up at JFK Airport and they kept people kicking picking people up and therefore Uber is evil and we're going to delete the app. Uh, I this to me is an again it's. It's one of these things, and, and this was, I just said it sort of in a calm voice. This was like enraged voice. People were enraged about this and so angry at Uber. And this is yet another case for me where people on the left, and maybe it happens on the right too, but I'm just, fo- I, I'm guessing it does in certain cases happen on the right. I'm just focusing on the left because President Trump is, is the president, and I saw this with my own eyes. They get really angry over something that there's, they shouldn't be getting really angry about. I'll say it. They shouldn't, and they do. And he, let me explain a little bit why I say this. So, uh, first of all, this idea that like the thing to do. Uh, so, so they remember the, the people who are protesting were upset that uh, people were being held at JFK Airport. So, some passengers had landed, and they had visas or green cards. And instead of being let in the country, they were detained at the airport because uh, this this order had taken effect like while they were in flight. And what happened is that once the order took effect, they were no longer allowed in the country, even if they had green cards or visas. So, and that's changed a little bit the last couple days or the last day, but for now, that's what was going on. And these people who were protesting were really mad that these people were being detained at the airport. Fine, you're mad these people are being detained. That's your right to be mad. But what was happening, so what was happening is the people were being detained because of this executive order. So the thinking here is, okay, these people are being detained, so what Uber should do is stop picking people up at the airport. Now, who does that punish when Uber stops doing that? Well, I'll tell you who the first people and the main people it punishes are. The people who just landed at the airport who have no other way to get home because the taxis aren't picking up there. Those people had nothing to do with this. That's a lot of hardworking Americans, probably most of them Americans, who just got home and need a way to get home. And so you're saying Uber should punish those people and not pick them up and give them no way to get home. I'm sure a lot of them, there's not even public transportation that goes near where their home is. Give them no way to get home when they had nothing to do with this. And you're enraged and outraged that Uber wouldn't go on board with giving these people no way to get home. You want these people punished. So it's like you, you say Uber should punish the people landing on their planes who had nothing to do with this, and the airport itself. The airport didn't issue the travel ban. So I just think saying that Uber should have to protest this and be in, that, that's like you're saying Uber should, Uber should feel like to protest this travel ban, they should punish uh, innocent people in the airport who had nothing to do with the travel ban. So you're upset that they didn't punish innocent people in an airport who had nothing to do with the travel ban. So that's one problem with it. Who else gets hurt if Uber doesn't go pick up at the airport? Uh, Uber drivers? Hey, uh, news for you out there. Uber drivers, for the most part, I don't think are really wealthy. I think they're hardworking, everyday people who are just trying to support themselves and their families. I have met a number of Uber and Lyft drivers in their cars who tell me uh, really inspiring stories about supporting their families from Uber. I've actually met a number of, uh, of immigrants who had recently entered the country legally, and they were, I felt, great Americans who were really making, they, they loved America and they loved being here, and this is the way they were supporting their families. Uh, so a number of these, a lot of Uber drivers and Lyft drivers, in my experience, are immigrants, legal immigrants. Um, and all of these Uber drivers, I would say at least most, unless there might be somebody who has a lot of money and they're just doing it for fun. But a lot of them are doing this to put food on the table. So if Uber tells their drivers you can't go pick up at the airport, I'm guessing there are a significant number of those drivers who won't make any money or will have significantly less money made that night for their work. And a lot, I'm guessing there's some of those Uber drivers who use that money to pay, for their, pay food for their kids and food for their wives or food for their husbands or food for themselves. And so you're, you want to hurt them. So if, you, if Uber stops picking up, let's go over this again. Who does it really hurt? Well, it really hurts all those people landing on planes who now have no way to get home. And maybe some of the, a lot of those people might be hardworking Americans too, who maybe they have to get up early for a job. Maybe if they don't show up for their job tomorrow, they get fired. 
and they're using that job to pay for their family. Um, and maybe if there's not Lyft, maybe if there's no Uber or taxis at the airport, it's going to take them so long to get home because there is no way for them to get home. Uh, that, uh, and maybe there's like some like crazy $300 limo they can take, but maybe they can't afford that. Uh, maybe there's no way for them to get home, and it takes them so long to get home, they can't get to work on time. Or they show up to work exhausted, and they don't do their job, and they get fired or something. Or they get demoted, or they get punished. Uh, this, you're punishing those. So Uber not going to pick up people punishes those people. It punishes all of the Uber drivers who are hardworking Americans, many of whom are immigrants. And it punishes the airport. I think in a way it punishes the airport, although you could argue it doesn't punish the airport. But the, none of these entities, the people coming in on planes, the Uber drivers, and, and the uh, people in the airport have anything to do with this travel ban. Oh, also I'll say this. Uber is a private company. Uh, it's a, well, no, I believe it is a private company. If I'm wrong, write me in. But I believe they're a private company. They have investors. The investors invested a lot of money in Uber. They have to answer to their investors. Uh, the investors invest to make money. Now, you might protest this and say, you know what Uber should do? Uber should say, forget about the investors. We'll just do what we want. Well, then they'll have no money. And you know what will happen? And if the investors, if the investors get angry at them and they stop investing in Uber, uh, what happens? All the Uber drivers lose their jobs. So Uber has a duty to these investors in addition to their other duties to do well by them. And maybe the investors thought like, hey, we don't want them to stop picking up at, 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 at JFK and lose that revenue. So anyways, there's all of these reasons Uber has uh, for keeping the pick, pick for 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 not stopping picking up at JFK, and some of these reasons, as I just said, were they want to give rides to these people who have no other way of getting home, and they want to get have their drivers get money. So, now you might still think that Uber still shouldn't pick up in these circumstances, and that's an ethical discussion. We can have an ethical disagreement about whether the right thing to do is for Uber to. Uh, stop picking up people at JFK that night or not. All I will say is this, based on everything I just said, there is not a clear case to be made that the right thing was for Uber to stop. I just gave you a really clear case to be made, uh, I just gave you, a, I think, a compelling case to be made that Uber, the right thing for them to do would be not stop picking people up because if they do stop picking people up that night, they hurt all of those innocent people and they hurt all their drivers, none of whom had anything to do with the van. So if nothing else, you could say, well, it's sort of 50-50. I don't know. It's a debatable question. But that's not how these protesters, these Uber protesters, were acting. They were like, I'm deleting Uber off my app right now because they're evil and they're bad. And if you, think, if you agree and, and, and you want to punish evil things, you should delete Uber off your app. I saw a ton of uh, posts like that. And I'll say this. You know what's really funny also is that uh, it was an other little detail people didn't say that Lyft also kept picking people up at the airport, but no one was saying, uh, hey, let's do a Lyft ban as well. So I know I'll be misinterpreted here, but all I'm saying is I, I am totally open. It's America, and I am totally open, and I would encourage everyone to question the policies of whoever is in office and to question policies of companies and question the policies of whoever and offer your objections. My problem with the last year and a half has been pretty much, I don't want to say everything, but so many things that Trump does are met with, with this anger and outrage that is like, it's like he was doing these, th it's as if he was doing these things that were crazily worse. It's as if he had like lined up a group of innocent citizens and shot them. You're seeing such anger. And then when I actually look at what he's doing, uh, to me, the anger is not warranted, and, and the anger is at something else he didn't actually do. And like this Uber thing, it's the same thing. These people are so ready to get outraged and anger and angry at everything, they don't look at the facts of the case. And the facts of this case is that if Uber stopped picking up, it would hurt a lot of innocent people. And there were plenty of good reasons to be made for Uber not picking them up. And maybe you still think they shouldn't, but to me, it's not something where you should be like, oh, it's clear, this is an evil outrage and we should delete the app. So anyways, I got angry again, I'm sorry, but that's, I did that. All right, now let's get back to your comments. I, I, I have said enough, I've said enough here. So maybe you disagree with me on that. Okay, back to the chat. So we took a little break from the chat, we're back. Uh, you can write me here, direct message me at, at Lookner on Twitter, 
Email me at steve.fluchter at rsbn.tv. We're talking about the day's news events. I want to see what you guys have to say. And you might have been like, hey, Steve, I sent my email 20 minutes ago before your rant. Why don't you, uh, why don't you um, read my email? Okay. Uh, I have a new email here. Thank you. This is from, it says J. J period. That's it. Uh, we have to, Jay says, we have to get used to this. Uh, the left has been very clear. They're going to protest everything Trump does. It started on Inauguration Day and basically has been going on every day since. We will see this for the next four years. I personally think they want to make every day so miserable that people won't want to keep them in office. So it's sort of, I was making some similar points to that. Uh, so thank you, Jay, for that comment. I appreciate the input. Let's see, we have some more comments here. Bunch of comments here from Twitter. Hold on, I'm just... Uh... So we have Joshua M. writes in. This is what Joshua M. has to say. Given the fact that Obama did basically the same thing with Iran in 2011, I believe, I think you might mean Iraq, but that's fine. Uh, do you think anyone will start to wake up to the media bias, or do you think most people simply don't care enough yet? Well, it's, 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 we'll wake up to the media bias. Uh, I mean, if they haven't so far, I mean, to me, like, if, you, if you've been viewing the media with a neutral eye, you can see the bias, and if you haven't so far, I don't know if you will ever change your view on the media. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely hopeful on this. I feel, like, I feel like people are very hardened in their views, and they shouldn't be. Uh, but I, I, I mean, if my, again, my point is that if you, if you think a certain media outlet isn't, isn't biased based on everything that happened, I don't think you're gonna, your view is going to change based on what they've done do the, like the next four years, given the, the, the previous year and a half. So I think people... People's views are really fixed on that stuff right now, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Joshua, thank you for the question. Let's see here. Um, we have... We have another question from the chat. Oh, okay. Oh, we have a couple questions from the chat. So Jude, RSBN moderator, thank you for the moderators for, uh, for moderating the chats. You do a fantastic job. Uh, Jude has relayed to me a couple of questions that people in the chat had. Thank you, Jude. So the first question that Jude uh, related to me is from a viewer, Salty FLAI, Salty Fly, Salty Florida I. And Salta Florida, uh, Florida I wants to know how the regulation executive order would help small business. So we haven't even talked about this today. It's a busy news day. There was an executive order signed by President Trump this morning, which like is supposed to cut down regulations on business. And I, I don't have it at hand here. I believe one part of it said like um, the couple the couple parts I saw were like one part was for every new regulation passed uh, by a government agency, two have to be eliminated, and something there was something about how regulations either have to be cost neutral or can't cost above a certain amount of money. Uh, if you want the details, go on and look at it. How do I think it will, it will help small business? I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, to specifically know how this order would help small business, I would need to go read the order and I would need to do a little research on this. But I think the thinking in general is that, so I've heard a lot of people say this over the last few years, that if you start a small business, so there's a lot of regulations that are burdensome to comply with. And these regulations might be things like uh, filing certain forms for people or having like getting, setting up health care for your employees or my point is no matter what these regulations are, some of them are regulations that like are expensive to do. And the expense is not so much if you are a huge company, but it's a ton of money and time if you're a small company. Uh, so I think, you, and again, I don't have these exactly at hand, but I'm sure you can think of some of what these regulations might be. Um, you know, if you have to file a certain number, a lot of forms, or if you have to like set up a whole healthcare plan, blah, 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 and, and any of these things take up time, at a big company, they can just hire bunches of people to do this stuff. You know, if it's like Apple, they'll just have like a personnel department which does all this stuff. Uh, but if you're a small business, you don't have a personnel department. Your small business might be one or two people or three people, and you can't afford to have one person full-time doing personnel stuff or whatever other regulation is. So that's a real problem when you have regulations that 
only big companies can handle because small companies don't have the resources to handle it. It takes up a lot of time just to deal with lots of different uh, regulations. And every regulation you put on all businesses is a regulation that somebody at a small business has to be paying attention to. And think of, when you say small business, again, it can be one or two people. Think of the small businesses you might know with a couple people who work there. So, you know, if, if this regulation does anything to, if this executive order, and again, I, I, have to, I haven't studied it or anything, but if it does something to, restrict the amount of time that small the, the amount of time that small business order owners have to spend complying with regulations uh, that's all for the good you know uh, because if the, if you have it can get to a point where small business people have so many regulations that they have to spend so much time and money complying with them it's better for them not to even be in business so that I think is the hope here in terms of the specifics of that uh, I would, if you want to know what are the specific regulations that, that might be changed, more about this, I would encourage you to go look it up. Uh, so, uh, but let's move on. But that's a very good question. And the other question that came in from the chat, this chat is uh, JKNK. And uh, that question was, um, how are the Democrats holding up the confirmations of Trump's cabinet? I don't understand the process. So I have to confess something. I heard this being talked about today uh, uh, in the press briefing. And it's something I've been meaning to go read up on, and I haven't. So, you know, it's, it's, there's so much to read up on and catch up on. And I, I, I don't know, like, I feel like if somebody is like a president or a senator or a representative, how do they ever keep up on enough stuff to, like, not be stumped during press conferences? Because think of all the things you could ask, like, a press, in a press conference, a president or a senator or a congressman about. Uh, foreign policy, domestic policy, all this stuff going on, like, every single country. Uh, there's so much stuff you need to learn. Even if you spend all day studying all this stuff, uh, you know, it would be a challenge. But, you know, so here, you know, we spend a lot of our day, we spend our day doing this kind of thing, but we spend our, do, our day producing and writing and other stuff. So I apologize to you that sometimes you give me questions like this and I don't have the answer at hand. So I will go look at it and hopefully have, maybe next time I come on, hopefully if you ask me again, I'll have an, an answer for you. But I don't have a good answer for you, but I would encourage you to, Again, search the web, look it up, but thank you for asking. More questions here. We have this one from write the wrong, or not questions, comments and questions, or just comments. I think comments is fine. Um, write the wrong UK. We have a lot of UK viewers. Thank you so much. I'm still wondering, we had a viewer who wrote in and they said they were from Afghanistan like a few weeks ago. And we never heard back, like, like, I'm still not sure if that person was serious that they were from Afghanistan. I thought it was really cool. But I, I think these people in the UK are all really there. Uh, so uh, thank you for watching. Um, the, the, uh, right the Wrong UK says, hey, I was wondering about your thoughts on the huge protest going on in the city of London tonight and the petition which has over 1,500,000 signatures proposing that Donald Trump should be uninvited to the state visit in the UK. Thanks. So, uh, so now we have two, I love this. This is, this is like the sort of citizen journalism we get. This is fantastic because I hadn't heard of this yet today. We've had now two of our viewers from the UK write in and say like, hey, they're protesting a lot in London. Uh, they're protesting in the UK. Uh, UK uh, uh, House of Commons is considering passing a, a ban on Trump either being in the country soon for this visit or being in the country permanently. Um, what do I think about all that? Well, I don't know the nature of the protest, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing, and if I'm wrong, correct me, I'm guessing the protests are probably similar to the protests here, and I'm guessing a lot of the signs are, pro are signs to the effect that like, this travel ban is anti-Islam, this travel ban is anti-refugee, and this travel ban is anti-immigrant, and I don't think the travel ban itself or anything President Trump has said about it is any of those things. I really don't. Go back and look what he says. Now, if you want to have a conspiracy theory that he's secretly anti-Islam, anti-refugee, or anti-immigrant, you can have that. I'm just going on the evidence of what I see. And I think a lot of this anger, not the objection, I think you can object to his proposal, but the anger I'm seeing is anger to, some, anger to, these, to a position that he has never taken. And I feel that this is a pattern that has happened over and over again, and it really upsets me. Um, it really upsets me when one side sort of uh, gives attributes to the other side of you that they don't have. And then they get angry about that. And that doesn't help our country, because then we don't have the discussions we need to have. Because the people protesting aren't even protesting the things that the original proposer of the policy said. So, but I'll, you know, 
I haven't, I haven't, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm guessing if you looked at the pictures of the protests in, in the UK, you might find some similar signs and chants to what you saw here. Okay, so, um, so let's, uh, let's go to some other comments here. Um, we have Andrew S. say, uh, now I, f let's see, hold on. Uh, now I feel like I'm watching the show Taxi. Oh, now I feel like watching the show Taxi. I'm so confused. I'm not sure what this is a uh, reference to. Maybe because I was oh maybe because I was talking about taxis before. So thank you, Andrew S. Let's see. Um, this person, I can't say your Twitter handle because it has a naughty word in it. So I can't read your comment. Well, I'll read your comment, but you have to change your Twitter handle if you want me to say your name. Uh, it says, "How about an RSBN Goodyear blimp moving around in the background with a banner?" Uh, do you mean like a small? This is this this. This space we have in this studio is not big enough to fit a full-size blimp. But if you want to send us a small RSBN blimp with a banner moving around my head, I would be fine and happy to have that flying around in the set. Oh, uh, we have somebody from Denmark. This is so exciting. And uh, just so you know, people out there, uh, we got go about 10 more minutes here. Uh, before we got to go in this chat. But if you want to send questions and get them in under the wire, either uh, direct message me at at Luckner on Twitter, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R, or you can uh, email me at steve.luckner at rsbn.tv. And uh, this has flown by so far, by the way. I feel like we just started, and I, I, I so appreciate your comments and uh, questions. So awesome. Uh, okay, so Mads Fredilaki. Now, I know I'm not pronouncing it right. It's M-A-D-S space F-R-E-D-E-L, the O this O with the line through it, KKE. And Mads Fred Locke says, just a shout out from Denmark, awesome. Uh, just a shout out from Denmark where the media is going just as crazy as the British ones. Thanks for all the great shows on RSBN. Well, thank you, Mads Fred Locke. So it seems there is a pattern of anger in a, I'm sorry, uh, I, I guess got something in my ear. Uh, oh, uh, I, think, I, I think I heard what I, I got in my ear. So let me finish my thought and then I'll, I'll go back uh, to this. So. Uh, I think it seems like there's this anger in, de in Europe in general, which is at least Western Europe, which is uh, similar to the protests here. Well, after we finish, I'm going to go online and do a little research about that. I'm guessing if you're interested in that, you could probably go online and find some live feeds of these protests. Although if you watch the Denmark one, you might not understand what the signs say. Uh, you might not understand what the signs say. And so, uh, so I, what, I would, what I would do is if you go watch the Denmark programs, if you go watch the Denmark protests online, here's what you should do. I think you should go. Uh, Tweet at Mads Fred Locke. His Twitter handle is at Hamfried, which is at H-A-M-F-R-E-D-E. So you could watch the Denmark protests, and you could like get a screenshot of one of the signs, and you could tweet, direct message Hamfried, and say, hey, Mads Fred Locke, what does this uh, sign mean? I might do that later. So, hey, Mads Fred Locke, I'm sorry if you didn't want people to email you, that, message you that stuff asking it to you, but you can always make your direct messages private or whatever. But maybe, maybe you want to talk to them. Uh, okay, let's, we got, all right. Oh, and I, I have to uh, also give them a shout out. So two things. First of all, uh, if you want to donate to RSBN, we have a new campaign, uh, which is at GoFundMe. Oh, no, Micah, you got to shout in my ear and say it's at GoFundMe. Yes. GoFundMe.com slash NextGenRSBN. Uh, and you can go there and see the new stuff we've got. We, we've gotten, we've been so successful, we've gotten bigger, but now we're getting even, we want to get even bigger, and to do that, you know, we need more money, and um, we don't take money from giant donors who are going to control our content. We want to be independent here for you, and uh, we're not this big, like, Fox News or MSNBC with their giant buildings in Manhattan. So anything you can spare, we really appreciate it, even if it's small, and uh, go check out uh, that fundraising site. And also, remember, our lineup tonight, we have, uh, we have, Right Side Now with Liz Willis coming up at 6 p.m. ET. The premiere of Bill Mitchell's show on RSBN at 7 p.m. ET. And at 9 p.m. we have Wayne Dupree on, uh, on Right Side Broadcasting. So check out all those shows. Let me take a couple more comments before we got to go because a couple more people have written in. Pam says, okay, Pam wanted to write in about the uh, Uber thing. So thanks for commenting on that. Pam says this, uh, I am guessing taxi drivers feel Uber is cutting into their income. What a perfect way to eliminate Uber and turn public sentiment, corporate politics at work, 
do taxi drivers have a union? Is this union politics? I bet the taxi drivers wanted to make good money and tips from the Saturday airport business and support their families too. I'll try to keep, th keep things shorter. So interesting theory. Um, I do. So Pam's theory is that the taxi drivers stopped showing up at uh, JFK to pick up people during the protest, the airport protest, because I think she's saying because she thought that Uber wouldn't do it, or at least maybe there was a chance Uber wouldn't do it, and the taxi drivers thought this was the case, and the taxi drivers thought like, hey, if Uber like keeps picking them up, we'll look really good, and this will get people angry against Uber. Now, I have, this is an interesting theory. I have no idea whether it's the case, none at all. Uh, I will say this. I did think when the taxi drivers did this, and I think this is a healthy thing to think. I, th I did think to myself, what ulterior motives might they have? And I just always think this when anybody does anything. So that's just me. But I do think when a big organization does something, it's worth at least thinking about. Now, I will say, on the face of it to me, it seemed reasonable that the taxi drivers might say, hey, a lot of us are Muslim. We want to protest this. So I, I certainly think that's possible. But there's always the possibility of something else. And Pam, I appreciate you sharing your theory with our listeners. Let me go to Paul Stemme. Paul Stemme says, uh, Steve, all regulatory costs are passed on to the consumer. Less regulations to comply with means lower prices for the consumer. So Paul Stemme thinks that if President Trump lowers regulations on businesses, that will be uh, less cost for the consumer. We have like only a couple minutes left. So let me try to fit a couple comments here at the end if I can. Uh, I want to check our email again and just see. Really appreciate, uh, I'm always just, I don't want to say surprised, but I'm always like really impressed with your comments. They're really uh, intelligent. We've covered a lot of, you bring up points that I, I don't bring up and that I think are really interesting for the listeners to hear. Um, well, Michael Kordek wrote in and said hi to me. Uh, that's not really a comment more so much as a greeting. So I guess... Um, let me just see if there's anything else here. I think we're, I think we're about out of time, so I'm going to wrap this up right now. So I will say this. Uh, by the way, if you, want to, if you want to in the future, if you like this format or you don't like it, let us know. Uh, you can email me or you can also email feedback at rsbn.tv. Uh, or you can follow RSBN on Twitter at, RSBN, at RSB Network, and you can always message us or give us feedback that way. We really want to do programming that you like and that you want to see. And uh, we did get a kind of, we, when we first did this chat thing last weekend, a bunch of people said like, hey, this is, this is, we like being able to give you comments and have them read on the air. We like the format. So we want to do it again for you. Maybe now you're like, okay, two was enough. Uh, one was great. Two was great. But now we're sick of it. Or maybe you want more. Let us know. Let us know what other kinds of shows you'd like to see. But uh, I'm really impressed with your comments, uh, the range of stuff you said. I think uh, hopefully you out there enjoyed hearing your comments as much as I heard your comments. And uh, I encourage you to keep watching RSBN. We're going to have new stuff coming at you. The Mike Cernovich Show is starting Wednesday night. That's a whole new show. And uh, Dino Costa is going to be coming on in a couple weeks. So we're really working to do, produce stuff for you. Uh, but again, I say this all the time. We do this for you. Without you, there would be no right side. You make us. You're the reason we're here. Uh, you allow us to be here. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, love doing this for you guys. And I will see you very soon. Have a great night. So RSBN was born in a uh, one-bedroom office in Pensacola, Florida. And once I realized the potential that we had to become sort of this new media, uh, the people's media, I knew I had something special and we decided to move our family to Auburn, Alabama. And so now here we are and, you know, right side is everything to my family. It's, uh, it's all we have. And I know personally for me, after graduating from college and not really knowing where I was going to go, I couldn't find a job. I applied and applied and applied. I couldn't find a job. So I, I moved across the state to Auburn, Alabama and joined Right Side Broadcasting. And I know without that opportunity, I wouldn't be who I am today.
and I wouldn't be able to support my family. For months leading up to graduation, I didn't know what I was going to do. I sent out my resume, I lined up interviews, and I did as many internships as I could, one after the other, waiting to find something that just clicked for me. I wanted to find a passion, and I wanted to love what I did. Finding RSVN was nothing short of divine intervention. I had spent time praying that my passion and my profession would line up. I relocated from Colorado to Alabama to work for Right Side Broadcasting. Right Side Broadcasting has given me a platform to express my views and opinions to you, the viewers. I moved here from Bettendorf, Iowa. We are so honored and blessed to have had the company grow as much as it has, but there's still room for us to grow. Um, the thing that is most important to me as far as being a part of this is the mission, true journalism uh, survives. I moved from Los Angeles to Alabama to work at Right Side, and you might wonder, why would I do that? Uh, well, Right Side to me, it's a really unique chance to do news in a different way. I'm really excited to do stuff that's uh, unique and new and different, and uh, Right Side, I felt is a place that can give us that chance to do that, and that's why I moved all the way here. All of these people, including myself, rely on generous donations from people like you. Without your support, we couldn't give you the content and coverage that we offer. We exist to serve the people, and now we need your help. Please help us take Right Side Broadcasting to the next level. Thank you.